Hey everyone, so I am super excited to finally be talking about networking and specifically Docker networking. Now, I wanna point out that this is a Kubernetes survival series and as a result, Docker networking is definitely a little bit different than Kubernetes networking. So I would say that this is kind of optional. However, Docker networking is relatively straightforward. So I don't see a reason not to learn it. It's really not a steep learning curve. And if you're just playing around with Docker on its own, you're definitely gonna to wanna to know this stuff. So let's get to it. So when you first fire up Docker, you're gonna have a few networking modes that you have access to for your containers. And that's what we're all talking about here is how do my containers get to the outside world? And there's a few ways you can do it in Docker. The first and the default mode is called the bridge mode. This is basically a default network where it will give an internal IP assignment to your containers and then it will basically NAT from that range to whatever the range or whatever the IP of the host that is hosting the containers is. So as an example, let's say you have a VM and the VM's IP is 254.11. Well, your container might get some other IP internally. It might be like 172.16.52.11 for something, right? It would basically NAT from that 52.11 to the IP of the VM, which is 254.11. And this is, as I mentioned, the default mode, and there's some advantages to using this mode. However, there's also some disadvantages that I'm gonna get into in the next video when we do kind of a deep dive on the bridge mode. The next mode available is the host mode. And this is a lot simpler than the bridge mode because all we're really doing is saying, hey, you're a container and you're going to kind of bind yourself to whatever the IP of that VM or that bare metal server is that's hosting the containers. So in that example I used, let's say uh, that IP of the VM is 254.11 and that's the VM that's hosting Docker and all of the containers on top of it. Well, in host mode, 254.11 now becomes my container's IP as well. And if I expose a port, let's say I wanna expose port 80, well, all I would do is navigate to that 254.11 at port 80, and I'll get to my container. Well, the drawback to this is, well, I can only expose one port 80. If I wanna expose additional ports, I have to actually make them different ports, like 8080 or 8081, et cetera. So that's a huge disadvantage to this mode. So it's not used very often, but it is there so that you know about it. And then you have the overlay mode. And the overlay mode is specifically suited to multi-host scenarios. So far, we've been talking about the bridge mode and the host mode, and those are all specific to kind of a single server, single host that is hosting a bunch of containers. Well, the problem and where those kind of modes fall apart is when we start talking about containers being spread over multiple hosts, multiple VMs or multiple uh, servers. Well, in that case, bridge mode and host mode, technically they can talk, but it gets really messy and it's just not ideal and definitely not scalable. So overlay mode gives you the ability to kind of stretch those networks across multiple hosts. Well, the one caveat is you have to have Docker Swarm, which is kind of the Kubernetes equivalent to be able to do that. So we're not gonna spend much time on this, but I wanted to mention it. The final mode that's available is called Mac VLAN. And this is kind of a cool one. This is where basically the container will get its own dedicated MAC address and it will actually bypass the Docker networking stack. So the whole idea is that let's say I have a legacy app and I wanna move it into Docker. I might break things if I start changing things like the MAC address. By doing this, I'm basically giving the container kind of a direct pathway onto the network so that it can continue to function as it did before it was containerized. Kind of a cool use case. I don't think it'll be something you'll run into in your lab unless you just wanna play with it, uh, but it is there. Finally, the last option are third-party plugins. If there's any shortcomings in any of these modes that are available to you, then you can pretty much solve them with a third-party plugin. I will say the other thing that I didn't list on this slide is actually there's also a none option where basically you disable container networking and it's completely isolated. That's all I have for you guys right now. I'll see you in the next video.